Lana Abu Huzle. I'm a humanitarian and development professional working in the West Bank and Gaza. Uh, what we saw in Gaza over the past two weeks, I think um, people of Gaza after uh, almost more than 11 years of a blockade that created a humanitarian crisis that's now chronic, coming out and saying enough is enough and um, the world needs to see what's happening in Gaza and try to find solutions. It is, uh, I would call, a freedom march. Uh, this protracted crisis is now getting to, um, in, uh, I think, in every sector, in every area. The food security has deteriorated, real poverty, the highest unemployment levels amongst uh, youth. Even the private sector that we thought at least could keep Gaza going is um, disintegrating, cannot handle this type of closure anymore. The water and sanitation situation is becoming really uh, on the edge of uh, what I would say a catastrophe. And of course, the underlining reasons are uh, historic, but also with the energy crisis, with the lack of electricity supply on continuous basis. I think now it's down to almost four hours a day that people in Gaza get um, uh, electricity. The water situation, almost 90% of the water is not up to the WHO standard. It's saline, it's contaminated. So we, even with the poverty, people now have to pay for drinking water and, and other kinds of uh, use at the household, which they cannot afford. I was there about two weeks ago assessing the water situation and I was really struck with how uh, now we are on a brink of a total collapse of the system. One of the ventures uh, I got involved in was working with youth uh, aged 15 to 22 to form uh, local councils, democratically elected bodies. It's kind of a platform for youth to positively engage in serving their communities, to volunteer, to understand what is the meaning of uh, ethical leadership, values. And over the past eight, nine years of implementing this venture, I came across thousands of thousands of amazing youth who, despite everything, they get up, engage, serve, believe that they are relevant and they carved their space in, in the forefront of the development process and uh, the humanitarian sphere in their own communities. So uh, that's why I see that those are the future leaders that will create change, in addition to my three beautiful daughters, of course. <laughs> you know, when you see real poverty, uh, real despair, you would think that uh, as I said two weeks ago in Gaza, I went into households, I went into the communities that have been affected directly uh, by the three, four wars over the last 10 years, the blockade, and literally they have nothing. Naive me, I thought it broke them. And then I left the Thursday before the march watching the news and, I, and seeing those thousands and thousands of women, youth, uh, men, old, young, marching peacefully, I was like, Lana, you're mistaken. You really did not get it. And that's why I say they did not break the soul. The, the, this strive for freedom, for a real change, a positive change in their lives. So despite what sometimes we think the, the forgotten people have been broken, the forgotten people are still uh, there and they need to be recognized. Everybody around the world should be pain. Palestinians, when they lose their lives, are not numbers. You know, you hear 18 Palestinians killed, 20 Palestinians killed. Those are, uh, they have names, they have families, they have dreams, they have aspirations. The, the, this beautiful artist who, uh, used to do those murals in the sand who that the night before he kill, was killed uh, on the first march made this beautiful hashtag I, I am I will return well uh, I think his soul returned uh, or or um, you know that journalist a mother a, a father of a young those are people that uh, they're not numbers so I am afraid but I think uh, Injustice uh, to be ended requires sacrifices, and, and that's uh, something the Palestinian people till today have to do. 
And uh, what angers me is in a peaceful march, a part march for freedom, there is no need whatsoever to use excessive force or what. Let the people express. But I think uh, sometimes they need to use excessive force to show the world that this is uh, a violent demonstration while it's not. Um, as a non-politician, hypocrisy. I mean, that's when, when we even sit as friends and talk and, and, and we are all for the values even that America stands for and uh, the world uh, uh, calls for, uh, human rights apply to all. And it cannot, you cannot pick and choose your causes. If you stand for justice, you stand for justice everywhere. And I think that's the core of the American values. So in a way, and when the world goes up in arms for whatever attack here on there or there, and I don't know who's behind these attacks, and I, the same kind of attacks were just subjected on Gaza. And on, on uh, you know, it doesn't have to be to steal somebody's life. It doesn't have to, to be always through bombs falling from the sky. And uh, that is something, when, when you see the double standards, it doesn't just hurt. You feel that something is deeply wrong there, and, and it had to be uh, corrected.